Hi everybody! Ever since Elon Musk announced the introduction of hot staging into the Starship design, there's been considerable anticipation among Rocket fans. Everyone is eager to see what this new piece of hardware will look like on the ground and particularly when its moment of truth arrives. So today we'll have a look at what hot staging is, the advantages it provides, as well as other rockets that have also featured this design. Usually a rocket comprises two or more segments, also known as stages, and most of what you will see inside the stages of a rocket is the propellant that it needs to burn to produce thrust and get to space which also comprises most of its total weight. So when a rocket stages, a portion of the vehicle that has now become empty is separated from the rest of the rocket. In serial staging, we see basically one or more smaller rockets sitting on top of a bigger one, usually known as the booster stage or the first stage. Examples of these are the Falcon 9 rocket, the Delta IV, the Saturn, the Electron, and Starship to name a few. In parallel staging, we see several first stage boosters strapped onto a central sustainer rocket. When the propellants in the strap-on side boosters are depleted, they are discarded while the central sustainer first stage rocket continues burning and pushing the second stage until it's time for both stages to separate. This is what we see with the Delta IV Heavy, the Ariane 5, the Soyuz, the Falcon Heavy, SLS, Atlas V, the Space Shuttle, and so on. Now, hot staging works a little bit differently than serial and parallel staging, and it has not been that common in commercial rocketry. I'm not sure about ballistic missiles. In a standard serial stage separation, when the first stage depletes its propellant or runs low, its engines shut down. Immediately after that, the separation mechanism is triggered, which decouples both stages. After both rocket halves have separated by a small distance, a process that typically takes a few seconds, the second stage ignites its engines and continues on its trajectory to orbit. However, when we discuss hot staging, the staging process is similar, but with one key difference. The second stage doesn't wait until it has drifted away from the first stage to ignite its engines. Instead, it does so while still attached to and being propelled by the first stage. An example of this was the Titan II rocket or ballistic missile that was used to launch the Gemini missions. The direct consequence of firing up the second stage while still being attached to the first stage is that a buildup of gases could destroy the whole rocket in less than a second. And that is why we see holes cut into a ring that separates both stages, which work as exhaust vents. The Titan II featured four large horizontal rectangular openings and each one of them was then divided into four vertical rectangles. Although that being said, the Titan would still more or less obliterate its interstage ring. The Soyuz rockets also use a hot staging to separate both rocket halves, but unlike the Titan, there isn't so much violence involved during the stage separation, and the rings have a very distinctive shape that almost looks like a crisscross lattice. And well, now Starship will also have its own hot staging ring, uh, which also shouldn't be destroyed during staging if rapid reusability is to be achieved. Now I imagine it will evolve and improve with time, but the first design of this ring that we've been able to see, uh, thanks to all the amazing photographers out there beneath the seemingly unforgiving Texan heat, is quite reminiscent of the design on the Titan II. Although in the case of Starship the ring has more sections cut out than it was the case with the Titan II, because, well, the Titan was a ballistic missile and Starship is a uh, monster. I believe it is six horizontal sections on the Starship with many more vertical rectangles cut out, divided in the middle by a beam. It is currently undergoing testing at masses, and I am eager to see if the current design works as well as SpaceX expects and uh, how it could evolve over time. Now to the question of why SpaceX decided to go with this design. Obviously it has to do with uh, performance gains. Elon mentioned as much as a 10% increment in payload mass, which is a lot of extra tons that, that Starship could ship into space. However, it is still unclear where exactly such a performance gain would come from. Perhaps the most plausible answer to this question came from rocket engineer Tom Mueller 
when he wrote on Twitter that hot staging would keep uh, positive acceleration on the whole vehicle during staging, thus avoiding the sloshing forwards of propellant inside the tanks, which could cause the empty space above the liquid propellant, also known as ulich, uh, to collapse. Actually, it is an empty space at all, it's just filled with gaseous propellant kept at high pressures. This collapsed space would then have to be repressurized through a process known as autogenous pressurization by tapping off liquid propellant, running it through a heat exchanger to boil it off into its gaseous form, and then finally pushing the gas in through the upper parts of the tanks. And this, of course, would be highly inefficient, especially in the case of Super Heavy, which will be almost devoid of any liquid propellant by the time staging occurs, further aggravated by the sheer size of its tanks, which will need a great deal of gas to get pressurized again. Furthermore, hot staging will also eliminate the time that Starship isn't under acceleration since it will remain under constant thrust, giving us a different timeline compared to what was expected uh, during the first uh, orbital test flight where Starship would have remained thrustless for about 8 seconds after stage separation. So, in case the Starship program needed to be any more exciting, uh, here we find ourselves eagerly awaiting to see how far Starship will come during its uh, upcoming second orbital test flight and how well the new staging approach does. So, a lot of exciting events coming up very soon. And as will be the case for many of you, I too will be glued to the live streams. So um, thank you for watching and I will see you very soon again. Uh, take care. Bye bye.